is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello and welcome to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor, and on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our associate pastor, our staff, and all the people that are helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We are so glad that you are here and that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church for worship today. I want to extend a special welcome to any folks who are maybe worshiping with us for the first time today. We are so honored that you have chosen Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I hope that you will take a moment to fill out the contact form. It is pinned in the comment section and it's right at the top of the Facebook feed. Please use that so that we can get to know you and can connect with you. There's a place there for you to put prayer requests and concerns that go directly to our pastors and our prayer team. So please use that contact form form today. Even if it's your millionth time worshiping with Douglas Avenue, please use that contact form. It's a great way to let us know that you're here and that we can connect you in ministry in so many different ways, online and in, in person. When we meet together for worship online, we do covenant together to participate and to be a blessing. That covenant to participation means that we're going to do what it is that we're doing in worship today. So if it's time to stand up and sing, go ahead and stand up and sing. When we're praying, pray. When it's time to comment, comment. Um, you may find it helpful to light a candle to help you to focus. We encourage you to set aside other distractions, maybe close other windows on your devices, coming close so that you can fully participate. And then we covenant together to be a blessing, that in the way that we comment, and the way that we're worshiping with folks in our household, with everyone that's online and in our community, that all of it is a blessing. So please join with us in that covenant to participate and to be a blessing. One of our favorite things to do together as Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church is share the love and the peace of Jesus Christ with one another. I encourage you to do that now with folks you may be sitting with, with uh, folks that are gathering online in the comment section. You can say, peace be with you, and you can respond, and also with you. And we're going to be led in that by some special folks of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Michael. Hi, my name is Denise. Hi, I'm Mariah. Peace be with you. Uh, we love our church. We love everything about it. Been going there since I've been a little baby. Um, Join my kids. You guys want to say anything about the church? Everybody's nice there. I like that too. Mm -hmm. You want to say anything about the church? Probably he loves daycare there. <laughs> Peace be with you. And also with you. Hi. We're the Klein family. Abby and then Kaylee and Christian. We miss you guys. Peace be with all of you. Please be with all of me. Good job.
My name is Trisha Kumach, and this is my daughter Josie, and we attend Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Please join us in our call for worship based on Psalm 99. Your line is, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's practice saying that together right now. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Sister and brothers, all of you and all of us, we are loved by God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. The ruler of heaven and earth knows each of us by name. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God hears and answers our cries for help. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. God shows compassion and kindness and empowers us to do the same. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Let's join our lives with God and worship God together right now. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Hi, I'm Nancy Vereen. I'm a longtime member of the Chancel Choir, and today I'd like for you to sing with me, Sing Praise to God Who Reigns Above. Oh yes, it is time for small talk. I want to encourage all the kids who are here in worship today watching to get in close to your devices and screens so that you can see and hear everything that's going on with small talk. Small talk is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and Laud the Lamb, her assistant, and you want to make sure you can see all of that. We'll also have a special assignment DAUMC with music and pictures today. This is a part, will be uh, on our Celebrate Wonder themes that are intergenerational worship and at-home Sunday school that we've been doing together. And all throughout this last month, our themes have included being helpful as we've celebrated uh, God creating everything. So come in close so that you can see Small Talk and our assignment DAUMC. Good morning, everybody. It is Miss Lori and Laud and there is a, and a boxer. Um, today we're going to talk about the word hope. Okay. Talk about the word hope. Laud, do you have hope? You're not sure. What is something you're hoping for? Here, whisper it. Oh, well, you might be in luck. Lod's hoping for pizza for dinner. Mm hmm So that might happen. Hope is a word that we use a lot. But kids, listen up. You guys are better at hope than us grown-ups. 
you always have lots of hope and think really good, wonderful thoughts and faith and faithfulness. And right now in these times, sometimes grown-ups are really struggling with that. But we need to remember to always have that hope and to look to our helpers to help us. Something that I look forward to every day, and Cohen's teacher doesn't even know it, is she does, even though he's getting to be a pretty grown up kid in fifth grade, show him Cohen, put your head over here. There he is. She does a picture book a day. And all of the books that she does have these wonderful messages. And every day when I hear those, even if I've been in a really bad mood, it gives me hope. Hope for our world, hope for our families, hope for our church and for our city and our government. All those big things that grown-ups worry about. But that one book a day gives me hope. What gives you guys hope? And what helpers help you with that hope? For me each day, it's Cohen's teacher and she has no idea. But it gives me a little bit of hope every day. So look around to your helpers and God. What gives you hope? Lod's being particularly silly today. I think it's because it's really nice weather outside and he wants to go do some other things. But remember that we love you. God loves you. Laud loves you. And have a very hopeful, wonderful week. <laughs> Bye guys, love you. somebody help not just anybody help you know I need someone help I've been a lifelong member at Douglas. I'm a member of the Trustees Committee and I'm also one of the Wesley Ringers. 
Today's reading of the Bible is Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. While Jesus is teaching, he is approached by religious leaders, seeking to trap Jesus into saying things to get him into death-risking trouble with the emperor or to discredit him with those whom he is teaching. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through this reading. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with the truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin which is used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and give to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. May God bless our hearing and understanding of the Bible story we have received today. Amen. Good morning. Please join members of our praise band as we sing God You Reign.
Today's reading from the Bible that Ali shared with us contains one of those oft-quoted passages of Jesus that lives out there in the common vernacular and usage. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and render unto God what is God's. Often, just the first part of that phrase is used in, in the common language. Render unto Caesar, unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and the rest is usually left off. There are all kinds of phrases of Jesus that live in our culture outside of their biblical home, such as the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Or we hear about uh, someone acting as a good Samaritan, or hear about the prodigal son returning home. These phrases have uh, this kind of disconnected life from their context and frankly get used in ways that often have very little to do with what Jesus was saying. The famous quote from today's Bible reading, render unto Caesar or render unto the emperor what is the emperor's and render unto God what is God's, seems to lend itself well to justifying the separation of church and state or the separation of the affairs of religion and faith with the affairs of commerce and government. So some folks say the church ought not be involved in anything that has to do with politics or business. Couple that with, my kingdom is not of this world, another phrase on Jesus' lips that's found in the Gospel of John. And you could further support this view that the church's business is about getting to heaven and not about anyone else's business, if you know what I mean. With this kind of interpretation, people often fall back on telling churches to take care of their own business and don't butt into mine. This view gets particularly strong play when religious people or the church as a whole questions the stances, responses, or actions of their government and elected leadership, particularly when it, uh, it calls into question economic, tax, immigration, and health care policies that advance the powerful and privileged over the poor, the sick, the refugee, people of color, children, women, the most vulnerable, the disenfranchised, just to name a few. I'm pretty sure that both Jesus and the writer of the Gospel of Matthew would be dumbfounded by an interpretation that faith and politics and social and economic policies are separate issues, and basing that interpretation on a single phrase from this story, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. Besides there being six other verses, Jesus' conversation with the religious authorities is a bit more complex and certainly more subversive, subversive than it may seem at first. We see in our passage today when the religious leaders seek to trap Jesus. They ask him, is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? That's the zinger question that's meant to get Jesus in a whole lot of trouble. And by lawful, the Zinger question means within the bounds of religious law and practice. If Jesus says yes, it is religiously lawful to pay taxes to the emperor, then he will be discredited with the many in the crowd who believed that paying taxes to the emperor was indeed an act of treason to the true faith. Even handling the coin with the emperor's graven image on it was offensive to some. But if Jesus answers no, it's not religiously lawful to pay taxes to the emperor, the Jews shouldn't pay taxes, then he is guilty of treason to the Roman government. And with, that would lead Jesus to being reported to government officials, which would certainly bring Jesus' arrest as a political agitator. But Jesus is equally clever and also a little bit evasive in his response. He has to see a coin and have the tricksters tell him whose image is on that coin. And when they tell him, Jesus declares, well, give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. Jesus doesn't directly answer the yes or no question with a yes or no, but throws it back to his questioners and his larger audience. Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and give to God what is God's? Jesus' response does not advocate withholding taxes. He's prepared to pay taxes and that his followers do so as well. 
At face value, it seems that Jesus does indeed divide up reality, that there are some things that are simply Caesar's, the emperor's, and there are other things that are God's, and you should give tribute to whomever at the appropriate time. So obviously, the questioners and larger audience are simply going to have to decide for themselves where to draw the line between what is the emperor's and what is God's. Well, maybe not so obviously. Like many of Jesus' stories and teachings, we need to take a second look so the truth of his response does not pass over our heads. We don't want to just walk away from Jesus like Jesus' questioners, amazed and impressed, but unchanged. When Jesus asks to see a coin, he asks, whose head is this? Whose title is on here? The coin, of course, bears the likeness of Caesar, the emperor, and so belongs to Caesar. So give it to him, Jesus says. People, however, bear the image of God, lovingly created and life breathed with God's breath in God's likeness. People may indeed pay their taxes, but they do not belong to Caesar. People belong to God. All people, all people back then and all people now. Indeed, the ultimate and only ruler is God. No matter how many taxes or how much bullying language or unfair practices or oppressive tactics Caesar may use. With just a little bit of reflection, Jesus makes it clear in his zinger back that God and Caesar are not equals, nor are they symbolic names for the separate realms of religion and politics. If that were the case, then you could believe that the emperor has his realm in which ultimate allegiance can be demanded and that God is relegated to another realm and neither do the two shall meet. Instead, Jesus leads us to a much larger and more powerful truth. While coins may bear Caesar's image, people bear God's image. So, whatever it is that people do, where, wherever they live, and whatever actions they take, in whatever situation, familial, social, economic, political, or religious, in all of this, people belong to God. That does not change, no matter what. This reality does not change when we wrap up a worship service on a Sunday morning or Wednesday evening or whenever we are worshiping. Whether we are with our families, our working, our schooling, playing, shopping, voting, posting on social media, or sending out tweets, we are gods. As people who love and follow Jesus, we are gods. Our loyalties do not change. We are living in complex times with troubling questions that demand the full attention of our faith, our morals, and our political judgment. We continue to live in the midst of a global health pandemic with COVID-19 and struggle with acting in ways that promote public health and safety. We are in the midst of an election season for the president of our country, other elected officials, and a ballot initiative on fair taxation, all of which have far-reaching effects, not just for us personally and for our families and our communities, but for the very poorest and most disadvantaged people in our midst. Some would say that our faith should be sequestered off to the side as we participate in the governing of our nation and state, as if there were separate realms for God and for politics. However, for those of us who love and follow Jesus and look to him for guidance and direction, we must render unto God the things that are God's, which it turns out is everything. Everything the entirety of our lives, our politics, our families, our work, our time, our resources, investments, our cash, all of it belongs to God. And as people made in God's likeness, Jesus calls us to trust God and to act like it, vote like it, 
and live like it. Amen. Join with me as we sing, Lord, be glorified. Good morning, I'm Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and it is now time in our worship service where we go to God in prayer. I'm gonna do things a little bit different this morning. I am going to call out a group of people and places and situations that we need to pray for, and then we'll have a moment of silence, and I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and then either out loud or as you pray in silence, say, hear our prayers. So I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, and then you will say to yourself, hear our prayers. So if you will now bow your head in prayer. Oh, gracious God, we pray to you and give you gratitude for all our blessings, for the good times, your creation, and the hope we have in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Oh God, we give you and ask you to hold tight all of those that are sick, are lonely, depressed, or grieving, or just needing you in any way. Be with them, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O oh God, we ask for prayers for those that are helpers, the nurses, the healthcare workers, the teachers, the first responders, the firefighters, and all of those that are helping others and doing ministry in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. For our church, our denomination, and our world, be with all of these situations, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And at this time, we usually recite together the Lord's Prayer, but I thought I would do something a little different, and I'm gonna read and pray with you the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And when there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love for it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite you into our spiritual practice of generosity here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. It's one of the most important ways that we show in our lives, in our giving, that we are truly gods that everything we have belongs to God. And we express that in our financial giving. And I am so grateful for the ways so many of you are being so generous with your financial gifts and putting those to work to our, in our ministries here at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank you for that. And I wanna encourage you to continue giving. You can do that 
with our online giving portal that's right on our web page and the link for that is in the comment section here in worship you can do that by uh, setting up automatic withdrawals with your financial institution or with us at the church office just give us a call to set that up and of course by sending your checks into the church office all of this financial giving is making a huge difference as we continue in powerful life transforming ministry of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church I want to encourage you again to use the contact form and fill that out if you have not already done so and remember there's a place there for you to put your prayer concerns and requests to go to our prayer team and to our pastors we do love praying with you please use that today so that we can be in prayer with you and then I uh, offer up to you now our mission moment um, we are going to have that brought to us today by Wouldn't It Be Lovely, the ministry and social enterprise that is at home at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church that's having a wonderful showcase sale this weekend and uh, into next week and the next weekend. So let's now celebrate with Wouldn't It Be Lovely. Good morning, church. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, the associate pastor at Douglas Avenue and also the executive director of Wouldn't It Be Lovely? And this is our Sunday morning mission moment. And it just seems appropriate for this Sunday that we talk about Wouldn't It Be Lovely? Because Friday night and Saturday was the beginning of our huge 2020 furniture sale. I don't know exactly how that went, but we are trusting in God because this was pre-recorded. Um, we're trusting in God that it went marvelously, and I'm sure that it did. The sale continues tomorrow, which is Monday, and also Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So feel free to shop, or you can still call me if you'd like to volunteer to help. But this is not a commercial. This is a segment to tell you about the ministry and about the gratitude that myself and all of Wouldn't It Be Lovely has for so many of you. As you can see from the stuff all around me, these are some of the items that they sold. But I tell people over and over, Wouldn't It Be Lovely is not about the furniture or about the pictures or about all of the things that we do to make money. It is about being in relationship with women that are struggling from hard lives, from lives of abuse and addiction. We currently have 12 women that are in the program that we pay a part-time wage. And those 12 women, 10 of them are recovering from drug abuse and the other two are recovering from domestic violence. And I cannot begin to tell you how this program changes them, empowers them and loves them. And it makes such a difference. It is a wonderful thing when I'm out in the community and I t tell people about Wouldn't It Be Lovely and about the courage that this church, Douglas Avenue, had when we started this program four and a half, almost five years ago. It was with your, cur your courage, your generosity, and with your trust that we have made this program that I believe has such a bright and wonderful future. We will become our own 501c3 in January, and that just allows us to access more grants. It allows us to grow in different ways. We do hope to go into some residential housing, some sober living for the women in the future. So please stay tuned because Wouldn't It Be Lovely is going to grow and it's going to continue to touch many, many lives of women in this community. But I want you to know and never forget that none of this could have been possible without Douglas Avenue, without your heart, without your generosity, and without your love how you circle around and love these women, either with your prayers, with your presence, or however you choose to do that. COVID has been difficult for Wouldn't It Be Lovely, but we have changed and we have modified how we do things um, and we've continued to love and support women. So once again, I just want to tell you that Wouldn't It Be Lovely is so grateful for Douglas Avenue, this church family and this church community. We love you. We always say that wouldn't it be lovely if all women had hope? So that continues to be our tagline. But I just want to say that we also say that we are beloved. We're all beloved children of God, all of you at Douglas Avenue and all the women that we touch in the program and the women in the future that we hope to touch. Thank you. We're back to sing, he's got the whole world in his hands. 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 He's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the sun and the moon in his hands. He's got the sun and the moon 
In his hands he's got the sun and the moon. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the itty bitty baby. In his hands he's got the itty bitty baby. In his hands he's got the itty bitty baby. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me, brother. In his hands he's got you and me, sister. In his hands he's got you and me, brother. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hand. He's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole wide world. In his hands he's got the whole world. In his hands he's got the whole world in his hand. Thank you so much for joining in worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Uh, we hope that this experience for you has been uplifting and meaningful and powerful, that you will continue to worship with us online, connect with us, use that contact form if you haven't already done so, that you can fully participate in what we're doing online in worship, in small groups, in intergenerational worship and learning, and in service throughout our community. Uh, we love you and we miss getting to see you in person, but we are so glad that we are able to connect in these ways. As you go into your day, go knowing that you are completely loved by God, a precious child in God's image, that Jesus goes with you this day and every day, walking beside you in guidance and love and grace, and that the Holy Spirit envelops you in power and purpose as you go to love and serve. Go in peace to love and serve your God. Amen.